Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode on Laid Back the Atreus Inca podcast. Our topic for today is the business of Afrobeats. Our guest for today is a media practitioner who has worked in different capacities in the music industry. Hello, Mark, Mark how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me, Rings. Uh, <laughs> it's a good time to be here. <laughs> I don't talk to you because I call you Dali. <laughs> okay, uh, because I call you Mark, do you want me to call you a D? No, Which one do you no, prefer? No, Overdose? I'm, I'm kind of like thinking the same, I'm the same thing for you as well because I called you Rings. I don't know if you still use that. Uh, it doesn't matter, Rins, that you think all of that is is all fine. <laughs> by, by the way, by the way, a little backstory because a lot of people do not know that when I was starting my career in radio, yeah, you were one of the first guests that I had on. I, I, was I, doing, I remember in a boy. I think I think that was in a boy. Yes, yes. I was doing sports that time. Yeah. Back then, I mean, of course, you've always been into football all your life, so. And um, I think it was hard for me then getting people to come to the studio with me to, to analyze. Yes. I think one day I just told the idea to you. I think you were my first ever guest before I even brought Ferdinand on. And I think I brought Obina on one day as well. So but yeah. so that was for the for the for the good old days. So you 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 in a way had a hand in my uh, begin like my start, so, so. yeah, nah, that, that, that's good to hear. But uh, if, 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 if you can help, if you can help your friend, I don't, I don't see the big deal. <laughs> I really don't see the big deal. But it was, it was fun though. Um, I think that was my first time ever on, oh, really? um, on a show, on a radio show, radio in, in particular. Yeah, but I enjoyed myself. It was nice. It was nice. But that leads me to my first question, actually. So, how did you get into media and music in general? Well, I mean, you know, part of the story now. We all went to the same school, and yeah. um, you know, you know, one thing about Nigeria, uh, especially when you go, like, I don't think people get proper guidance while coming up. You know, yeah. secondary school they say they have these guidance and counseling class, and then yeah, they say this one is your guidance and everything. But yeah. don't really guide anything because I had no business studying theology. I just had <laughs> <laughs> what, so 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 you don't think geology helps your career in any way? I, I have never for once, apart from when I when I went for industrial training that I would yeah. go for, you know, some drilling um sites, borehole drilling and all of that. After that, I don't think I've ever done anything you know geology related so it was just not it was just not what i was passionate about so but you know i had a sister then who i, I mean it's still my sister like my sister my older sister was to study this particular course in yeah Egypt. so it didn't work out for her and somehow i, I don't know my family just wanted somebody to study at, I'm not sure what they saw in that. I mean, it's a good call at the, at the time. It's a good call because at the time, if you remember, at the time, a lot of people who were geology, they end up working in different oil companies. Yeah, I think that was the attraction for my family. So they wanted somebody to work in an oil company. Yeah. So, so you know, but along the somewhere along the line, with the whole, you know, you know, of course, same thing in school now. So yeah. You, we want to see the jack how everything was going. How many times did you even go and strike? So and <laughs> I I had always been uh media enthusiast. Like I love Cosmo and, and like I yeah probably the number one fan. I was always listening to the radio. In any capacity. So but- you, you know you mentioned um the Cosmo FM thing. Man, that was the number one urban radio station back then. And for some reason, um I don't understand how and why they just closed it down like that. I thought, okay, so on or maybe they should have privatized it or something like that. I at least done something with it. Because I think afterwards a lot of media radio stations tried to copy what they did, but they found it hard to do. Yeah, I mean, um, why a lot of stations 
trail and copying them is uh, I think that should be a story for another day because it's actually long. Having yeah. been busting for a long time, I can tell exactly why it's hard to replicate because what works now was not what was working then. Because yeah. because most, you know radio had a lot of advantage then. Yeah. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have the social media. So a lot of the new songs that we were enjoying then was through Cosmo. So true, uh, true. Uh, so now um you know Cosmo came then and then they had this band uh, uh, band talk and a lot of their presenters were in accent, right? Yeah. <laughs> kind of enjoyed that then. Because as at that time, I think our self-awareness then it's not the same compared to now. So if, if you if you're coming to establish a radio in the east and you're doing that accent and nobody's going to even pay attention to you, yeah. right? Yeah. So that is why now the shift happened sometime in the mid to intense when. A certain dream FM came came to the and then one guy started a program, did in now man, and was doing yeah, all Yeah, did in now man. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so now that's that's the kind of thing we do on radio now if you if you are serious. Yeah. Because that's what people can relate to. And the demographic that's listening to radio now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because the people who would have loved those spaceman and co, those guys that are now doing Twitter and doing TikTok and Instagram, so, YouTube, and the rest of them. Yeah. So, not, so you're not going to get anybody to listen to you if you want to do that. So that's why it's hard to actually. And it's not. It's, to even replicate Cosmo now, it's not even an idea. I won't advise anyone to embark on because it is pointless. You're not going to sell. Yeah. So, but they had the advantage then because we didn't have the internet, so we relied on them for so many things. I remember a program as believe it or not, right? Now, believe yeah. it or not, was just them going on the internet and finding one strange story and telling us. So it was a big deal because we had no access to internet. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So, so some of these stories, okay, now that uh, Hilda Bassi um, did the Kukaten thing, hmm? yeah. Cosmo would have reported that to what? I would have been, wow, get? Yeah, but, but everybody so, watched it live this time around. Yeah, but now we watch it in real time. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a, you have a point there actually you have a point there but um it, it's just that I, I was just surprised that the moment um cosmo fm folded up like you didn't have any alternative at the time i was surprised at least at that time there was no alternative right to actually follow up with what they did or what they were doing at a time but right now you have a point because the demographic people who listen to radio now you have a because i just remember something do you remember this song when this song came out um, Kevin Little turned me on. Yeah, I was in secondary school at the time, I think, and I remember because we were doing all these chemistry practicals. So everybody would be like, "Oh, did you hear this person shouted out um to to this person on on the radio yesterday?" You see all those things, yeah. So it was a thing, and then I remember them. That was the first time and the first place I heard that song before I watched it on Channel Low and the rest. Of it. If you remember back then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're right in that aspect. So maybe because most of us didn't have access to those things, they were our first, um, would I say, our source of information, kind of. Because because if you actually time travel with what, yeah. you, know, with what you know, if you time travel to when Cosmo was alive, it will not be much of a big deal. You know, yeah. To you, Jonathan. Yeah, and yeah. So, so I, yeah, I, but it was a good station. We loved it. I mean, that station inspired me to get into radio. Yeah. Shame, but the shame that the EFCC case, case came after um, uh, the owner left the government, and you know, and they had to seize the place. It was under EFCC's management at the time. But yeah. But they didn't have managed it well like the owner. So, uh, you know, at point they just had to just you know yank the whole thing off. But yeah. that's, 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 that's for Cosmo. So I was talking about Agony Bleeding. So Cosmo was a huge inspiration. Um, I went we through from school. I think it was a time we were writing projects and stuff. So, you know, one, I think Obina was one of those who told me, I'm 
of this initiative and here, you can just approach them and, and let them know that you want to be doing some of the things with them, yes? Yeah, while you wait, yeah. 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 They, they accepted the idea and I started, I started with sports because they had nobody doing it that then. But my yeah. interest is always music and entertainment, but I have to be forced to do what because then, I mean, you guys were the sports ones. Like I was. Yeah, the- yeah. I, 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 I was a, I was a football fanatic. I was a free catcher. <laughs> Honestly, I had to learn um, following sports because that was the only chance for me at that stage. So yeah, I learned, I learned within the space of three months. I've already known everything about the football thing, and I started doing the program for them. Yeah, that's why I invited you one day. So when I left the town, um. You know, I would love to move on now we like them, which is like the home of sports. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. you know, at that point, I was like, oh, well, this is going to be a chaos. So, <laughs> to help with every other thing that I wanted to do, get me. Yeah. So, and then, in, 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 you know, while doing that, I also have never, ever, ever dropped my interest in music and entertainment. Yeah. 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 Um. So, uh, so, but since you mentioned Cosmo FM and Unity FM, yeah, because I remember back then those um, radio stations that actually played a lot of old melodies um, from people like Two Face, um, P Square, the band, who we would call pioneered the kind of Afro beats we listen to now. Not not for them. I mean the ones, the kind of beats we actually music we listen to now so do you yeah. think they paved the way for whiskey bonner boy the video um they paved the way for them but do you think this um later generation actually made more success compared to um two faced at p square and the band them well it depends on how you look at it that's what i'm saying like if you look at it in in, in um like in, in terms of finance um outreach influence we like which one would you say um had more success yeah the, the whiskey generation i'm not gonna lie you know why because when we had when we when we had the band this square two face and co yeah so if you listen to radio back then like they usually just get you know limited slots on radio with their songs right yeah so that's because their songs there is still this huge disparity in quality when you compare it to the foreign songs that dominated our space then. Because then, uh, during their time, um, songs from the US actually dominated our music space then. Like, I mean, if you tuned radio, then it was the Nelly, the Fifty Cent, the Bowel, the that's those, those are the guys we are listening to, right? Yeah. Uh, even the Kevin Little you mentioned and everything. So now, Two Face and Co were doing well, but if you still put their song side by side with these Americans, right? There is yeah. still in quality. You still see that no, these ones are local artists, right? Yeah. So when we see then the video came into the scene, and no, let me be and Co and this this their set, this new generation, right? What they did was they made sure that if you put like bring Yankee song, put it here, bring the video, we still put it there the same thing like there is no difference there's no difference yeah so so now the the, we started to have a shift to radio station playing now 90 percent of nigerian songs on radio yeah but 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 don't you think um p square and two-face and the rest of them also have um they were the ones that actually pioneered this because if you remember back then i remember p square during their limelight, they, had, they actually did a duel. Um, so many collabs with Rick Ross and the rest of them, the band with um, with um, Kanye. And the, you see what I mean? So they were, at, don't you think, them trying as much as possible to bridge that gap between the American music industry and Afrobeats actually give Whiskey and Bonaboy them now the chance to actually now take over. And then you can say you can play Afrobeats side by side with um, American songs. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying that day laid the foundation right the yeah foundation. now these guys it up because if you remember then there weren't many 
with me. That's why you could count them. P square, the bank, two face. Yeah. Do you understand? But yeah. when um, the likes of this kid and David, when when it was their turn, it wasn't only them again. You could cut like hundreds of other do you understand? Artists. So, yeah. So as a station, you could have plenty of materials from Nigeria that you could play, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also at the time that these boys started coming in, that this was yeah, that is um um Pisco and so started reaching out for the collaborations um uh, you know overseas and all of that. Yeah. yeah. So now when the likes of Wiz, Wiz and Co started coming in, remember a whole new set of producers. Also, some of them who probably lived abroad and learned this trade ablo- abroad. Came yeah. And the production quality also changed. You get me? So, yeah. so, so it was at that yeah, level that the marketing part of the business also became serious. Like, the video and co could really have a, a, a big budget to actually push a song. It, it, yeah. It because wasn't it, before, before, right? So now it, this they could make sure they saturate everywhere with their song. That's that's yeah. that the video and co brought again. So that they were the ones who started doing it. Like know that this is a business. They they they, they, they transitioned from just this thing being um a just entertainment to, to business it, itself. It, to yes. art, from art to business, yeah. yeah. So that's 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 the that's the role I think they play here. Yeah. Yeah, but, but but that leads me to my next question. Yeah, question because I remember when Davido actually um, came onto the scene, there was this rumor that the dad pumped, pumped in a lot of money <laughs> um, to the radio station to make sure that he gets airplay. Um, but now I, I'm not sure if it's still the same now. So because you mentioned he changed um, him and his friends changed the way and the Afrobeats yeah, and made it a business so looking at the marketing side of things now in Afrobeats do you think do you think new artists still need to do something similar like pumping a lot of money to DJs um, and radio stations and make sure that their, their song get airplay what do you think yeah the the, 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 the formula though I mean not exactly uh, the same style but the the the, the marketing is marketing like from 100 years ago um, marketing is just about you reaching as many people as possible with what you have right that you are yeah. selling yeah uh, so so that time the video had the money to reach them faster like pay just make sure you get this out right so yeah. you can still have the money to still you know, pay your because I mean the channels have changed. Like then it was radio mostly and TV, but now it is TikTok, it is Instagram, it is Twitter. Now it is basically social media. That's what you need to use now to to, to, to reach the audience that will help you blow your music. Yeah. So now, but you, I mean the marketing is still the same. Just if you don't have the social proof yourself, you have to pay people who have it to help you. So now. But here's the thing, yeah, people say they video pumped in money and everything, but his, his style was still not there. Like, if, 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 if you, no matter how much you pump into marketing of your song, mm-hmm. yeah, <clears throat> there is the foundation that you need to have, which is number one, you are bringing value, right? Yeah. So, because the people who are listening to your song, sharing your song, doing all of these things, are not doing it because they necessarily care about you. I was telling someone the other day, one of my videos on TikTok hit a million views. Now, I was telling somebody that I am I've never I've never been that person that 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 that, that, that you know push job, you know. I I don't I don't, I don't push show. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't act in a way that will attract me, you know, some sort of pity or like or kindness or, or whatever. I just basically don't give a fuck most of the time. So yeah, I was telling someone that my video got to a million views. I couldn't believe it. But I understand why you did because I provided sort of value.
the blockers were posting, most of whom I've never met, they were not posting because they, they liked me or they wanted my progress. First of all, that is going to get to great friends here in, uh, on their own uh, platform, you get me? So, yeah. why they were posting. So, now I offered value, it was easy for me to spread the video. It happens with music as well. Offer real value in the and also, you know, try and be unique. Like, I'm trying to explain why it was easy to work for the video, even though he spent money. He came in with his own style. It was unique, right? So it was yeah. easy for him to sell. Because when you are coming in to do something that other people are doing, our minds, the minds of the consumers of this movie, I think it works like um, search engine, right? Okay, yeah. Instance, there is Oja Piano now, right? Yeah. If, um, Casey has been, Casey has established himself as Oja Piano fame, right? Yeah. Um, then the next guy is Cola Boy. Then perhaps the Oja Piano lane still has like five more slots, right? Yeah. Now, 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 when those slots are filled up, hmm, anything else you are doing on the piano, hmm, you are going to queue behind these five or ten people. Who are seen at the pioneers? Yeah. The kind of people, people who are consuming this. It's like a set put out something hmm, and they search on the piano song. The one will be at the very bottom, right? So if yeah. you now want to, you know, make yours more visible than cases that means you'll be ready to spend money or whatever it is that would shoot your own from that bottom to come and couple cases so yeah you know, but it's easier for you to think about another style that any other person has not done yeah Casey combined of that and the other you could combine something else so if you become the first person to do this or one of the first people to do this you, you do content as well you know exactly what i'm talking about that even yeah if, if a new filter comes out on the tiktok for instance it favors those people who do it first but after yeah. like a hundred or two hundred people doing it you're doing it again you're just wasting your time yeah so now it's easier for you to market this song when you first of all provide value and second of all novelty just you know try and invent something be the first be unique. It will be easier for you. If you were, if you were going to spend like one million to push a track and you provide value and sort of like uniqueness, you can spend less than a quarter of that money and get more results. Yeah. Than, than you know, doing what you're doing. So that's just basically um, the overview. Like, if you want to talk about how, the, how marketing, like, you just try and push your songs now. And that's exactly what David did when he came out. He had the money right but yeah. also the so young kid who was all over everywhere so what is the video he, he, he's blessed with a unique voice so he, the voice may not be all that all that right but it's unique <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, a blessing. it's a blessing because it's unique it's a blessing <laughs> and then, no no but but what you, what you just said about the other piano and the cola boy and because I know you also made a video recently about other piano and the Egeda song and you were saying that these were actually done by two new artists I can't remember that I think cola boy and one other person no, he said what, fancy what, papaya or something like that he said um these um artists because they were relatively unknown compared to people who hijacked. Um, hijacked their tracks and like, people like Casey and um, Flavor them that did the get a song. How do you think this new artist can actually? So if they, if this is why I'm asking the question. So if they decide to do something different, for example, let's say they take um, the beat of, um, for example, um, stepping name of love. You see what I mean? For example, I'm just giving an example by R. Kelly. Take something like that or reggaeton and try. Uh, mix it properly with Afrobeats and it becomes a sound in Afrobeats. You see what I mean? How can they protect themselves or their work from 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 being hijacked by established artists? Because we've seen it happen now with Cola Boy and the other Ikeda song. But, but what happens is you may not protect it because I mean nobody has a monopoly of any style, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, so far 
the artist didn't hijack your lyrics or your exact sound uh, um, beat and whatever. So, so, so far, there is no copyright infringement, right? They have, yeah. the, they have the right to do whatever they want, so you can't stop that one. But however, okay, look at the color boy now. Casey has popularized or that piano, but that has also helped the Cola boy. In fact, he is now the second hottest artist around from that east. That's the Cola boy now. Yes. And, and then he jumped, he jumped right back to do a tattoo of his own. And that is the, in, in the Ultra Piano um, lane, that's like the second hottest. In fact, there's one South African DJ that actually um, mashed up six top Ama Piano, Ama Piano songs on the continent. His song, Ama Piano by Shaki and Olamide, Casey or the Piano, we had three from Nigeria he matched with another three top from from South Africa and there was like the six top do you understand so in a way because he started it he's also benefiting from it right yeah so, but, but, but but still like this is what I'm trying to say you know you know there's this recency bias we normally have because maybe it's recent but this is what I'm trying to say because if you remember the very first Nigerian artist that actually went into that actually used Ama Piano, if you remember, that went into the South African market to do Ama Piano, to do a song with Ama Piano beats was in your life with Maradona, if you remember. She yeah. was the first one. But for some reason, nobody talks about her anymore. Maybe she hasn't released anything in recent time um, using Ama Piano. So now everybody's um, linking Ama Piano to um maybe your other piano and uh, massacre like you mentioned so now assuming now, assuming um a new artist is similar to Niniola now no I'm, I'm sure some people don't even know this a lot of people forget that hey this old person was actually the first person to actually try this out so how do you think the new artists like can protect like not just about protecting themselves to ride on that particular wave to create something or do I, they need to create something new or do they need to keep creating something but with similar beats like Ashake? What do you think? But but this is what I mean. Like the point I'm trying to make is if you remember, like Niniola was the very first Nigerian artist to actually go into Afrobeats with her song Maradona. She she broke the South African market with that song. Piano, I'm a piano. She broke the South African market with that song. And I love that song. But what I'm trying to say is in the context of um in the conversation where people are talking about my piano now and um in the Nigerian music scene. Nobody talks about her anymore. Like you mentioned, the three people are talking, the songs they are talking about now is Oja Piano, Kola Piano, and the one by Ashake. So imagine a new artist comes out now, the person is so creative, the person um, does, um, uses like a beat from maybe Swiss Beats or Timbaland or whatever, and creates like a, an Afrobeat song and it becomes a thing and everybody jumps on the wave. And um, do you, how do you think? the new artists can maintain that because if the song is not that recent and people like David and the rest of them have already jumped on it it's possible he may face out people will not even remember he the person has done anything to contribute to that particular genre of music at, at a time don't yeah, you think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah well, i mean you have a good point there but here's the thing yeah as a new artist too hmm? i should tell people you, you don't just wake up one morning hmm? yeah uh, Let's you have a label that is behind you with the financial war chest to be spending money, right? Yeah. First thing you need to do if you want to be independent, which I, which I think is the best, is for you to learn a skill and be sure you are making money, right? Yeah. So if you create a new idea, right? Yeah. You are going to promote it. You're going to you may not have money to reach like everybody in Nigeria. Hmm? Yeah. But just like Kola Boy did, he reached enough people to know that he pioneered this. So that if anybody jumps on it, there's gonna be a controversy of oh no, you hijacked it from this guy, right? Yeah. You hijacked it from this guy. 
I'll give you an example. When um, Portable did Zazu, hmm, it was already a thing in Lagos. Like, a lot of people knew the song in Lagos, right? Yeah. So, Olamide had to jump on it with Okoli, right? Now, yeah. Olamide, Olamide could have hijacked it, right? But if he did, a lot of people already knew that in Lagos, right? Yeah. We, we, we didn't know about it because we were not in Lagos, right? Yeah. We were just, we were just all over the streets of the in Nigerian wave and whatever. So, but a lot of had to jump and collaborate with him because he knew that if he if he did um if he had jacked the song, people would definitely go back ah ah now this guy song where they blew up for Lagos Street and I all let me you get me. But yeah. if, if if possible didn't make himself visible to the extent that almost everybody in some of these, you know, um, ghetto in Lagos already knew about him. Hmm? Yeah, it would be easier for an uh, Olamide to hijack that kind of thing. That, because they hijack songs all the time. All these artists that you see, they hijack ideas. That is why when they bring all these um, new uh, young artists, when they bring them together and start rolling with them, most for the most part, what they do is actually hijack their songs, hijack their ideas. That's what they do. Yeah, they do it, right. What do yeah. you know to be as an artist? And like I said, first of all, let me see you get get some, you know, income stream. Like just make sure you're making enough money to at least afford can afford you make a small video about your song and post on TikTok and you know, you know, uh, sponsor it and whatever. And just even if it is the whole of Enugu that you have reached and they know about this, it's enough, right? Yeah. They are enough witness to the fact that you started it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's not just enough for you to create new things and just it will just be between you and your family. That, that, and, and, and I, <laughs> no, but, but 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 you see this thing um you said um you know sometimes fear fear is a big issue for us. Um the, the reason what I'm trying to say here is creativity you need silence and and solitude to be creative and when most of people take out that time to be creative they create something good but because a lot of people are also scared of people judging them they are they are not sure how the public is how people are going to take it they tend to hide away or um shy away from actually posting um themselves (laughs) um, out there you see what i mean they are so scared to put themselves out there because whether you like it or not once you put yourself out there, be ready for criticism because it must come. It must come. It's normal. But yeah, but in in, in in the case where this particular person, like a, a new artist, has tried as much as possible, the person is not scared of rejection, criticism. The person puts he or himself or herself out there. But because the person does, doesn't have a lot, a lot of following at the time, but it doesn't it doesn't go viral. And people like um, like I said, like Casey, they jump on their track. How do you think? What do you think the person can do? Because at this at this point, in, um, if you look at it, the person has done the work. The person has put it out there and promoted it on, um, over and over and over and over and over again. But it hasn't gone viral because it doesn't have a lot of following. What do you think the new artist can do in this context? Okay, um, you answer your question. Before, I like to even go back to what you mentioned. I like to talk about uh, that um, idea of. Um, Know, uh, being a, a afraid of a criticism you know, or public shame or ridicule and everything. Okay, that's to just start it from the last thing you mentioned. Now, if you create one eh, and that one doesn't go viral, right? Yeah. You create another one to make sure you keep creating. That's why you're creative, right? Now, you, 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 if you succeed in getting one out there hmm? that one will even pull all those ones that refuse to go viral right it, the, 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 the one the, the one that you succeeded in you know ending that virality might actually pull those ones so the thing is there is no guarantee your stuff is going to go viral simply because you are creating something new or something different or you are putting in a lot of work and just let's not forget 
person, they're not the only person creating. There are like millions of people creating, right? So, uh, so if you, I, I, I give you an instance of what I'm doing, right? It took me up to, I think I've, I think I've created a, up to like a hundred videos before I got um, first uh, new view, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not as if some of the things I was doing were not you know creative or that they were not new and whatever i just felt like introduce it like what what i was doing always knew that in another one mm, i am i must improve on one thing if it is my editing i'm going to add one new element i just make sure that there's something better than the last one they they, have that, yeah that that is the missing, you know, piece of the puzzle that actually hasn't caused this to go viral. Sure, you get. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, I succeeded in getting one that actually moved very well. And when you mentioned the fear of being ridiculed or shamed, my brother, at the moment you, as a creative, has decided to go public, right? Yeah. The thing you need to do is to increase your capacity for shame and public ridicule. You have to do it because if you are not, if you don't do this, you are not even going to go anywhere. I've had people from from three months ago when I started, I was like, I'm all YouTube ready, I'm all go sit down, go sleep. There are, there are people who, out of nowhere, right? They start attacking you. Yeah. Out of nowhere. And then you'll be wondering, you know, what have you done wrong? No. Right? <laughs> but, so, it, 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 but but you know that this thing, um, you see this thing you said. I know why I mentioned it because if you remember, I've tried so many things in my life. I, I'm I'm this kind of person. If I want to talk about anything about football, you know football fans can be so emotional. If I want to talk anything about football, blogging, I've done a lot of things. So I'm used to putting my opinion out there. I don't care. But whether you like it or not, what comes with that is a lot of insults. <laughs> it comes with a lot of insults and you need to be strong, emotionally strong to take it because the reason I'm saying this is because I feel that's what holds a lot of people back because once they get that attack, they stop. Or maybe they've been sending DMs to producers, music producers, radio, and they just with their, with their DMs and just ignore them. Trust me, you see be, people ignoring you, rejection and failure is part of the it's part of the journey. <laughs> it's part of it. No, no, you, you are right. That is what I'm saying. That mm, if first of all, mm, if you are getting these rejections or getting attacked, mm, you have to stop at some point and think about whether you are doing it the right way, right? Yeah. So if you are, because sometimes I, I self. I assess and reassess myself too. I'll be like, am I doing it the right way? If I am seriously convinced that I'm doing it the right way, right? I, I don't mind. I don't care. Like, throw whatever you want to throw at me. I, I don't care. In fact, I, when I post mm, and I get a negative comment, if it is within the first 30 minutes of posting, right? Yeah. I will actually engage you, whether negative or positive. Now, my post, I usually engage positive comments, right? But if it's within the first 30 minutes, mm, yeah, whether negative or positive, I engage you. You know why? Because it helps the post, all right? Now, because if the algorithm thinks that there's a, there's a movement going on within the post in terms of engagement, comments, or whatever, they'll think that it is actually a good post and they might just boost it for you. So, if no matter what you do at me at that time, I will engage you. You see that I give it back to you, brass bowls, or I can <laughs> or I just tell you, okay. <laughs> so, it all depends on the mood I can give you brass bowls, or I can decide to correct you, or just. <laughs> But I, but, I, but, I, but, I, but 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 you know the thing I don't like about the buzz boost? Like normal me, I don't like I don't take nonsense, but I had an epiphany recently. Somebody who's out there criticizing you and you're there giving them buzz boost. You you are the person is trying to give you negative energy and once you engage and do the buzz boost, you absorb the negative energy. You see what I mean? No, 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 yes, here's the thing. And I don't need the negative energy because it can actually affect your creative flow. No, here's the thing, here's the thing, yeah. What I am 
my response, the content, the content of my response is immaterial to me at that moment. Because the, the, the main purpose of responding to you to that negative comment within the first 30 seconds of my um, post is to boost engagement. Like mm. I just don't care about you. Like if you wait for like, two hours to post, if you notice, if you go to that case uh, video now, hmm? yeah. So today people are still cutting me out there. But are you serious? <laughs> I don't give a fuck whatever the post has already done what it's supposed to be. It's, it's my second most performing post. So it's, it's already blown. So I don't really care about engagement. About, I don't even read what they write anymore. You get me? Yeah. So I don't read what they write there anymore. So uh, I don't think we need the first 30, 30 minutes, right? I, yeah. I have, right on IG, for instance, I have. Um, just, just over 4k followers and I know what uh, 30 minutes I know the number of views the number of views that is good for that um, audience size like if I get a hundred within the first or oh, 200 views within the first 30 minutes right I know that yeah. the post is going to do well hmm? so yeah. I'll use the monitor in the first 30 minutes so that's why I didn't reply comments so I will know that the post will naturally do well. It, it, it will run into thousands before the next day. You get. So now, once I confirm that whatever you are writing there is no longer my business, so, right? <laughs> yeah. So whatever you're saying there is now you helping me with engagement. You don't even know you're helping. Me, so you're not even you're doing me a favor. So I don't care because here's the thing, man. I, I, I have a video about it, but I haven't posted it. Here's the thing people don't understand about social media. Hmm? Social media is such a level. And that's why if people understand all these arguments, hmm, they will stop. It will not be happening. Because here's the thing people are doing now, right? I've, yeah. never, I've never been there, all right? So we have two different realities. Hmm? And yeah. Let's say we, we didn't know each other from school, right? Yeah. There is no way me and you would have been having any conversation at all about anything. Okay. Yeah. But you could stay there and say, ah, Omo, um, ah, Omo, to bat my hair costs so, like, I have to spend like 50 pounds to bat my hair, right? So, yeah. I would just say there and say, Omo, Omo, the 50 pounds, so I will use bat hair for one day. You a lie. You get me? Yeah. I'm forgetting that and I don't live there. So that's two different realities. And the only reason why I am having this conversation with you or this argument is because of social media. If there was no social media, this argument would have been between you and those who live in the UK as well. Yeah. So you get. So that is why I understand this, and that is why I don't pay attention to what anybody says there because you don't know me, I don't know you. And I know that some people can even cuss you out for no reason. Stop and decide to just type, you are mad. For no reason. And then you can you Yeah. So if you try to get emotional about that, that is when you have got that negative energy. But no, that. no, 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 that's what I'm saying. The, I think the mistakes that people make is they end up um, getting emotional about it. Like, this day, like I said, Maybe in the past, maybe when I was younger, now, nah. but the moment I had the beef and I realized that as long as you are producing stuff, mm. yeah, he said that somebody will come at you because they don't agree with your opinion, or somebody is just jealous, or somebody's envious, there must be something. So, the person, well, <laughs> there must be something. So, I, I, so I, I, I tell people that you know, criticism is good, right? Yeah, but you, you don't take it from anybody. Hmm? Yeah, you have to pay attention to the quality of criticism. For instance, the way I look at things, like there are some people who one guy once told me that I will remain in obscurity forever, that nobody's going to come to my page and whatever. But now I, I think I've grown, I've gained since it's just been three months, I've gained over 2,000 new followers in three months, and that's organically. And that's that's on IG and on TikTok, I'm nearing 10k now, right. And yeah. I, had a, I had a video who that that's gone over a, a, a million views. So now, when the guy said this to me, I checked his page, right? Yeah. And I saw the sort of things that he liked, right? Yeah. And 
he's not interested in what I do. So, so taking advice or criticism from him is like you, who is a footballer, somebody who is a who is playing handball, telling you what to do, right? So the interests don't align. So that is why I am careful about who I take criticism from. Like I have to know you that you know. Uh, if, for instance, now I go to um, maybe uh, so, um, maybe I get I get an advice from someone like um, um, Joey Akan, who, who I know that. See, I, 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 I like if like to the young as the like music as I, I say this to them all the time. First of all, you're going into the state full responsibility. If at the end of the day it is true that you're doing rubbish, hmm? yeah. Take the responsibility. But if at the end of the day, what if you succeed? Right? Yeah. What if you succeed? And the thing is, people may be right, and people may say you are one, and they are right, right? Yeah. <laughs> It is a material. It, 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 it shouldn't stop you from doing your thing because we're seeing work artists that also don't work for themselves. Yeah. So, the dialect is that is he, is he, is he work or not? He is. But, <laughs> I mean, he's making a living out of it, right? Yeah. Zico is work, but he's making a living out of it. Yeah. Even the Zazu guy, too. It's all, about, it's all about visibility and being able to take the nonsense that comes with it anyway. <laughs> if, if, if you are really determined that this is what you want to do, right? Yeah. You can be the famous work artist. You get? Yeah. You can be the... Like I, I, I told one guy, let's say, I said I was in the I say, uh, I want to be famous for doing this rubbish, right? <laughs> the rubbish you like. <laughs> yes, the rubbish I like. Yeah, I think most of the rubbish that I like. And that's what people don't understand. That's why it is better for you to just, if you are creating it, it is better for you to concentrate on creating original content. Value. Like oh. content of value, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. But I think we've deviated a little bit. I know um a, a little bit from our main topic, but can we take it back a little bit? Yeah, so yeah. Now, we've talked about my piano or the piano and the rest of them. Um, is there any like we are talking about original content and providing value now? What other collaborations across um across between two music genres would you love to see? Um, I'm, I'm I think I'm getting tired of Afrobeat and my piano now. So. Is there any other one you would like to see well, that is so original that a new artist can actually delve into? Well, um, at the moment, I think it is still going to be... Okay, like, what happened in uh, uh, Japan is actually... It, it's not a combination of two sounds. It's, a com- it, it's an infusion of an instrument into a sound already. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> so... I think I like to see somebody infuse or ja- in hip hop as well. Yeah. Or you know, um, infuse it um, on reggaeton, probably. So, uh-huh. but if you're if you're looking at bringing two sounds together, it may not work because um, combination of two sounds. Unless you, you transition from this sound to this other sound. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying mixing two sounds together. For example, uh, uh, the, the Nigerian songs now they use a piano piece, but it's yeah. Afrobeat song. You see what I mean? Something like that. Yeah. So, what kind of beat would you lo- like to see now that somebody, a new artist, can actually try? Like originality. That's what we want to see. That can actually try and then. Um, um and then sing sing on that particular with that beat like another make another nigerian mm-hmm. song or african song with that particular beat like what would you like to see well that's uh, first of all like i said i like to see um a lot of these um you know let me from let me come from the Igbo perspective a lot of these are our instruments like uh, we've tested our chat right yeah and last time go uh, zoro tested again on hip-hop as well yeah so, uh, hey, i like to see probably you know the odd like in hip-hop 
right? Yeah. Uh, or maybe in R and B, right? I think it's going to bang. Yeah, because that Oja is actually a very sweet uh, uh, melodic instrument. So I think it's going to bang in any either hip hop or 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 ja- Although uh, I know of somebody who is trying to combine Ogene and Ama piano, that's in the works already. <laughs> so yeah. I'll see how that sounds when it comes out. Somebody is already doing that, and somebody is doing a ba with Ama piano as well. I know somebody is doing that, so I like to see how that uh, sounds when it comes out as well. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of you can interpolate. You can just bring in just one small element from here and just put here. It must not necessarily spread throughout the, the sound or whatever. So it's just about you know uh, experimenting. Just anything you can just. It could just be you know the intro. You 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 play around with a strange instrument from somewhere into. Uh, probably hip hop beat or RB beat. I know someone who's already doing the Gene and Ama piano, which is going to be called a Gene piano. I know somebody who is doing a Ba and the uh, Ama piano, which is called a, uh, a Ba piano or whatever. So, but it, it's not just. I don't think they should limit themselves to just to maybe infusing one instrument into a sound. They can combine many instruments. Like I didn't need to see somebody do the Ogene or Jack plus I'm a piano. You, you understand? Yeah. Uh-huh. But the one I would really love to see, um, like today today is somebody doing Oja in hip hop. I like to really because it would, it would kind of like, uh, you know, you know those old folk tales, like it, it would kind of sound like that when you when you blow the Oja and then you rap and all of that. So I think it's going to, it's going to, it's going to sound well. Fair. Fair. But for some reason, do, do you know what I would like to see? Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've tried Amapia and the um, but South Africans also have what we call the, um, the, um, the Kweto sounds. The Kweto music as well. Mm. They can also try that and see how they can actually combine it with the Ogene and the rest of it. You see what I mean? Something mm. different. Just because if anybody does that and tries to mix a Kweto and um, Ogene, that would be that's originally that, that would, he would be the first person to try that. You see what I mean? Mm. Or yeah. somebody can actually go into the market and and check what's popping right now. Like I like the fact that. Bonner Boy um, d- um, did a song with um, It Wasn't Mine Enough For Me. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, to the Braxton and then t- um, turned it into another hit as well. So they can sample something like it doesn't even have to be um, it doesn't have to be um, an American song or a Western song. It can even, they can even pick up a song like Oyeko Wenu song. You see what I mean? Yeah. Or Magic Fashe. <laughs> you see what I mean? Something that's, different. That's yeah, that's 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 sampling, and uh, it, it's a proven recipe for hits, right? Yeah. Like, because this this song had been a hit in the past, there is the probability of it being a hit again if you sample it, whether it's interpolation or straight up cover. There's a higher chance of it being a hit again because it had worked before. It's just sort of like a, a, a formula that has worked before can work again. So I agree with you. I think a lot of these artists need to do that more. But they would, in, in terms of sampling some of these songs, I think the bottleneck there is really getting the approval of original owners. Right? Yeah. Uh, so if you get no. approval of original owners, no, but 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 they, they sh- I think I understand what you mean, but but they should try. Um, but even if it's not um, a popular song, because if you look at all these um, Drake, all of all of them you see right now, trust me, maybe because I've been into music for a long time, some of them sample songs from the seventies and eighties. Yeah. It's not that they put it into rap. You see what I mean? It's the truth. Yeah. It, but they, even Kanye West, most of Kanye West's album. He actually sampled some from, uh, for example, through the wire. That's that is song yeah. by um, I can't remember, Shaka Khan, I think. That's a yeah. very very old song. Like, 
because Kanye West is a music head, everybody knows that. So I'm not surprised he samples a lot of good things. Like it doesn't the, the song hasn't hasn't doesn't have to be rap, <laughs> but he knows how to mix even if it is soul music plus it's rap. You see what I mean? He, has, he knows how to combine the two to actually produce a hit. So is is I know um getting the permission maybe how about I think if new artists actually look into that they may they may be onto something. They don't they yeah. don't have to um go to all like even sample songs that were like his his per se like yeah. super super yeah. his per se. But as long as okay for example um um I, I would I wanted to say career well but Kerewa was a hit back then. I'm trying yeah. to see a song that was not for example I, I played this song recently you know the song um do you remember the song for ik diary end yeah. of my life uh, actually you see that song eh? yeah. i have been talking to my level if i yeah. don't see that information i'm giving out like i mean i i'm not sure i should be doing this but i've been talking to them about we doing something with this even if it's that intro you know that thing, ding, 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 ding. exactly. Yeah, you now switch it to something else. Exactly. I like, think anybody does this, it might just bang. To be honest with you, yeah. and for some reason, my label, I don't know, they haven't really. Sanctioned. No, 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 no. It, 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 it's just that um, sometimes it takes a while for people to pick things up because mm-hmm. I remember back then doing one of my numerous house parties i remember because i used to act as a dj then i remember i used to play this song i, I don't i, I won't forget it because i know i did it a lot this song you remember this song by rihanna um please don't stop the music yeah, 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 yeah. and people will just get mad and tell me what is this but trust me that song is a good party song that if you mix it with any afrobeat song today yeah. today <laughs> yeah the, it, 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 but it's but because it's not um something every, you know like what we do is for example i'm, I'm sure the first time i'm a piano came out in nigeria people will be like what is this you see what i mean because it's not yeah. something people are used to yeah. first of all um it, it will be met with a lot of um uh, people taking aback like what is this but well, give it time <laughs> so mm. but that's that's another i just give i just give you guys another example yeah. <laughs> just yeah. imagine mixing um rihanna please don't stop mm. the music with something else mm. you see what i mean yeah. I get, I get with an Afrobeat tune, imagine um somebody like um Joe Boy and the rest of them jumping on some a track like that, or even um Rema jumping on a track like that. Trust me, I think <laughs> that would be another hit. That would blow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I agree with you. You know, because I keep saying to people like you know, uh, daily that oh, as as long. Nothing exactly yeah. new, you know. I think after the after the 18th or 19th century, after the 18th century, nothing is new, and no, no form of art is new. Yeah. After that century. So it's always whether it's drawing or painting or music or acting or movie, whatever you're doing that that that, that is art. Now it's not new. So. But people always um, confuse it with, you know, um, straight up copying, right? Yeah. Uh, people confuse it with straight up, which, which I don't encourage. I, I actually don't advise that. So, but you can be inspired by by, by whatever. I, mean, I wish I was doing music because there are a lot of old songs that I would have, I would have re, re, redone by now. Do you understand? Now yeah. That, you could even, you know, and some of these artists do it. You know, people like um, I won't mention them, but I know artists who go to some of these. A lot of these artists, I know for sure that they go to other countries and steal ideas from songs that are just popular within the shores of the countries. I have. Uh, songs that we in Nigeria have not heard before, so they can just bring it and you know. There's there's even a very popular one that happened. I think it still happens with with Diamond Platinum. You know, he actually 
in in Tanzania. Eh? He, yeah. he refixes all of the popular songs from Nigeria and does it with the Swahili. He does it all the time. Yes, sense. Okay. Yeah. And he also did it with one of the popular Nigerian songs. And, you know, it becomes a hit in Tanzania and in all of East Africa. So, I mean, it, it's something that I... I Are you encourage. serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. So, so what's, the, what's the title of the song? The SS1? Let me check it out. I can't remember now, but I remember when he posted it on Instagram. Whiskey actually went there and commented, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I just search. I, I, okay, just search. Um, uh, diamond songs um, similar to Essence Hall. I'm, I'm sure Google must have something about that to, to do. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm searching it now just to be, to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Essence. I'm telling you. Interesting. Mm. Oh, okay. But anyway, I, I know we've been talking about collaborations and all. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think this thing we are seeing now, the success Afrobeat has enjoyed in recent years, do you think it's similar to what happened in the early 2000s when it was the time of reggaeton? Um, or do you think it's going to, it's going to be different and Af- Af- Africa, Afrobeat is here to stay and the artists can actually sustain this energy and wave? Well, it's a good, it's a good um, point you mentioned this because I was telling someone the other day that I don't really, yeah, I know that, yeah, we are caught with the frenzy, we are all, you know, enjoying the wave and happy that uh, the world is now uh, rocking with Afrobeat and all of that. I was telling somebody that I don't think we should be carried away because, like you mentioned, nearly 2000, it was the turn of reggaeton, like, yeah. I mean, from I Latin, Latin, Paul, all of them. <laughs> And, and, and the, you know that time was a combination of the guys from the Latin world and the Jamaicans, like the Caribbeans and so on. So they enjoyed what we think we're enjoying now. I remember when uh, uh, Nicki Minaj jumped on the song with Egyptian, you get? Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I wasn't even in those Caribbean countries to know how they reacted to it. But I think we here in Africa, I think we are kind of like, um, you know. I, I don't know how to put it. I, I think we are getting carried away with with this. Right? That's what I feel. Yeah. <laughs> and and let's not forget the reason why these Americans are working with Afrobeat now is because it is it is time for them to benefit from it. Like they have they have seen that you know the streaming culture is gradually growing in Africa, and Africa has a number. Right, so now it is to their own advantage, right? Yeah, if you connect with Afro, if you look at what this radio stations in New York, Hot 97 and Co, Power 105, the Ebros, the uh, other guy in New York, the reason why they're always inviting all these burner and so for interview and the entire because they want a share of the market in Africa because now. A radio station in New York could have a YouTube account, a TikTok account. These are now the channels to broadcast, right? And yeah. that radio station in New York is no longer a New York radio station. It is now worldwide because with their YouTube channel, they can reach audience in Africa. So yeah. they're actually interested in the audience share, the market share. It's not as if they give a phone call, they're trying to help in the Afrobeat. You get me? So yeah. now, if you check their YouTube channel, once they interview in Afrobeat, like Ghana or or Rema, that interview or or they do, that interview is bound to give them the highest view, probably that month or or even the whole year, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so they know what they're doing, and I think we are just <laughs> carrying the way we it. And if we are not careful, if we don't like capitalize on the and build a lasting infrastructure that will even survive our music when they hands off. Because I'm sure as soon as they are done milking our music and culture, they will hands off. And yeah, if, def- we def- left, if we have nothing left to hold on to, we fall back to where we, where we used to be before. So I think yeah. what we are enjoying is very 
you know, those who are the players in this industry, we need to start building infrastructure in place to make sure we even survive with or without them because they are going yeah. to be that when they are when they are done milking us. Yeah, <laughs> but but it, 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 I mentioned it because um, like I say a lot of people are being carried away. Um, it's like when people are famous or something and they think they are all that anything can happen and your film will just go like that for example i remember back then um the band was the very first person we all loved the band it was this such it's not it's still a good entertainer but i'm just saying because he's not in limelight as he used to be he was this person that everybody liked listening to him he was he had a lot It's important that we mention this because I think a lot of people are being carried away with the wave and the popularity of our music and songs are getting at the moment. But if you look back, um, I'm this. I like I like to think think ahead. And if you look back, when Afro when reggaeton was the intention, Sean Paul, every artist all wanted to do a collaboration with Sean Paul. If you remember, every artist. All the rappers, all the singers, almost every all of them did, did a collaboration. Beyonce, they all did a collaboration with Sean Paul. You see what I mean? But today, I don't think anybody is talking about Sean Paul and reggaeton like that anymore. I think they had their time, and um, on the reggae songs, I think they they, they they had their time. So it's something we we need to think about because if we really want Afro peace. Um, to stay, if we feel like oh we've gotten this close, so we really need Afrobeats to stay and, and, and be part of um, the top um, um, top genre of genre of music. We, I don't know if there's something we can do. I'm, I'm 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 just thinking right now. I don't have any answers, but I'm thinking in my head. Do you think there's anything we can do to make sure we, we, we actually? Um, no, tell the world that even tell the world that we are here to stay. And no, it's just not yes. just in under five yes. years and we're gone. Yes. Is there something we think we can do? Yes, yes, I think we should stop playing into the air too much. We, we, for instance, they have created um, the African uh, category for the for the Grammy, like 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 best Afrobeat songs. You know, there used to be best African international artists. Act, like, yeah. But they have best approved songs and like like they we are seeking validation from them to the point of you know thinking it was a good idea for them to have an Afro beat because this is an American award. Let's not forget it's not a world award, it's an American thing, the Grammys. So now something like that, we should be rejecting slots like that. Like we should make it, we should make this whole movement African, right? Okay, okay. Why do you think we should um, reject that? I'm just curious now. Why? Because they are the ones who are going to. We are putting them in a position to validate us. And yeah. So it's not good because at the moment they stop validating us, it's gone. So we need to take it back and then have this and make sure that if for any reason mm, anybody is. Uh, giving you any award like you treat it like you, they should they should be like award ceremonies in africa who you who you are that you attach you know um bigger prestige to than than that grammy because yeah. if you give them if you if you give them that power to, to be the one to validate you collaborations now eh? yeah the collaborations now i even want our guys to start charging them money like, 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 yeah, and don't get excited when, because these people are ripping you off. These people, okay, Selena Gomez said the other day that, uh, more like she was lucky to have done some calm, calm down the remix, and then that has really changed her life, and it did. <laughs> no, 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 but, 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 you know, but you know, because, um, she's bigger than Rema, people will think, um, she's just saying it for saying it. The truth is, that, these that, artists are not stupid, like. That she, she jumped on a good track and okay it's just like um drake drake jumped on good tracks from different international acts like um, whiskey or all those people uh, and whether you like it or not it makes sure that he, drake remained relevant in the music sphere whether we like it or not tell me where on earth 
Selena Gomez would have managed another hit song. Like, I mean, it's been long she, she had a hit. You get? Yeah. <laughs> so, so she, she be able to tell you that this, this guy hasn't helped him. So, what I'm saying is, I mean, I mean there's a way we withdraw that power that I think we are giving them. You Take know, it away from them, yeah. Yeah. To, to constantly validate. So, that's the only way to preserve this because at the moment they stop, at the moment they discover another sound from another part of the world and they <laughs> ship they will forget you yeah they'll forget you just like they are forgetting those guys from jamaica yeah the... that's right. true so that's, that's true that's the but, so so do you do you think if african artists end african up african boycotting african. the grammys it's, it's sorry just about the grand or even boycotting it like so like literally i mean it's just you, you know sort of give up that body language that this really doesn't really matter to me like you get me no uh-huh. no but, but you know that's when when people say um Bonner boy is proud he he can be arrogant but he yeah. was the first person that said he does he's not going to come to a show if his name is written in, in small letters and i don't blame him that means he actually knows his what he has a point <laughs> You know that 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 was a watershed moment. Like that that literally, if you are if you are like to mention points where you know events that happened that actually helped that probably to the to the position where it is now. You mentioned that point because at that moment people started paying more attention and paying more respect respect to our artists from from this part of the world. So, yeah. so what he did was good. So so from there. Most of these our guys are like they don't the whiskey. They all they all have deals with Sony, Universal, and and. Co- so most of these our guys are eh, assigned to Sony, Universal, and the rest of them. And these are like the the the, the, the infrastructure pipeline of distributing music worldwide, right? Yeah. So, I like access that these people have. This Sony, the Warner Music, the Universal. Like, I like a situation whereby, you know, we have our own indigenous um, companies doing this. Because the reason why they did the whiskey and whatever are global is because this is Kenya and they are pushing them. They are most in charge of their distribution now. Yeah. So I think, you know, we should all we to do that ourselves. You know, because I don't think there's a grand company that is capable of pushing anybody or distributing whatever you have to the global audience. Like when I mean global to reach the West and Asia and so these guys have it and I think we do have our own. So these are the ways to probably preserve this and make sure that when they leave, you know, we keep and also we need to also keep evolving. Like, um, you know, the Afro beats does not have to be, um, you know, just the the ones we are hearing now, right? Yeah. So, they need to also evolve. Like we mentioned the idea about you know trying to try out new sounds combination and make and and also it, it is the base is still Afro beat, but you come back. So if we keep evolving with our sound, okay, even when they leave, we can still survive on our own. And there's a, there's a need for. To really like, I think Nigerians, like, because we are um, heading the continent as far as this music and entertainment is concerned, so we need to also consider the whole of Africa our market. Mm-hmm. Because even if the, the US, they are probably on top and doing whatever they do because they have the numbers, and not yes. only they have the numbers, they also, they, these numbers I'm talking about have. Uh, you know, purchasing power, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Imagine if Africa, maybe um, Africa grows economically, and we have all these, you know, the Ghanaians, the East Africans, East Africans, and plus the numbers we have in Nigeria. 
we are good we don't even need them mm-hmm. we don't even need them so i think Nigerian, the industry from here should also be looking at it as an african industry right yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. so that way it can also be preserved when All right, so I'm going to ask you um, this question, the, fi- the final question, so that we can actually round up. So, um, if you're asked to name your top 10 Nigerian or Afrobeat songs of all time, what would you pick? Okay, um, I would, uh, okay, well, I'm really doing this off the top of my head now. Okay, I'll try, but in no particular order, so I'll just go give you like 10 in no particular order. So first of all, two face African Queen because of the way that um, the song just you know like travel was well, the first time the song was traveling that far you know uh, across the shores of Africa, uh, shores of Nigeria, Africa, and even beyond. So and I'm also picking Bank of Leaves, um a strong thing. He, I mean, the song made it cool for everybody to at least you know try a R B in this country. So. And that's true. Um, Timaya's the mama he was telling a story with that, so it made it cool for people to actually try and tell a story with the uh, Afrobeat songs, and you know, and uh, that's uh, I, that's three now. Before yeah. um four um four, you've mentioned two Timaya songs, yeah four. Okay, okay. um five uh, is going to be. Uh, the band Why Me? <laughs> okay, six. Yeah, but, yeah. That's like when he brought like uh, that's a showmanship into the business. Like people could, you know, like show themselves. You know, um, the videos that we do, the personality of you know rich and affluence. You know, yeah. The brought in the game. People could sing about how many, how much money they have, how they enjoy it, and everything. So yeah. That's too shabby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seven. Um, whiskey. Uh. You said seven whiskey. What? A whiskey five cents. No. Okay. That, yeah, that was the first time. Like uh, any song from here is actually coming like outside. outside. The West, you know, the way we now have like last last from Bona and Co. So, uh, the way people made it, you know, the guys from the West made it their own. So, I'm uh, taking that essence that seven eight. Uh, we'll go for Fino's man of the year. You know, many people may not agree, but Fino actually made it cool to rapping in indigenous language like really really cool like you know? I actually thought you would pick um Ablo. no um man of the year was kind of like you know you know you know that Kanye Drake you know it just came out like you know what you have in a Kanye and Drake together like you know the ease the ease with which um the ease, the, the ease that he's rapping like he's rapping with ease and then at the same time trying to you know like you know the Kanye format of being a storyteller and all of that so mm. and he's doing it with the Igbo language and stuff so a lot of people felt like oh that's cool like people are actually gonna you understand me yeah so, so that's I think nine now the eight <laughs> okay um two more Two more songs can I remember now? Um, two more. Um, <laughs> two more. I think. Uh, can I see two more songs? My mom, um, let me let me try one from a female now. Um. Uh, which, okay, okay, okay. Let me, okay, let me even, okay. This is bonus. Um, 
I, I think Bonas DA, yeah, okay, is another yeah. good yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Bonas DA is another good one because he actually put in a lot of work into, you know, the the, the writing of the song. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, you know. He, he showed that you could it's not it's not it's not necessarily you just come to the studio and just say whatever so it sounded like he was a freestyle but if you listen to him closely you understand that it's gonna be taking a lot of work to actually say some meaningful things there so i'm yeah. taking that one as well then the last one will be uh rema do maybe like i've never seen you know, Rema they maybe showed some. It happens now. A lot of people do that. Showed a lot of artists that you can actually not really make sense in a song, but you can just vibe, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's not be vibing. Uh, not necessarily making any meaningful sense, but you can just vibe, and people people will just enjoy the rhythm and the melody, and not even care about what you're saying. So I think for that I am going to pick his the maybe song that's my last. So that's it. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, I know that's very very hard because there are certain songs I actually expected you to pick. Um, <laughs> because I um I have some song on top of my like um Tiwa Savage Kele Kele Love because that was the first. I think that was the first Afro beat song by a lady that actually went went that got people made people go crazy. I think. Um, you, you have a point, and to also um, probably be inclusive, I should have actually mentioned the song from Tiwa or Yemi Ale. But that's good you're mentioning that. Yeah, fine. Yemi Ale, the Ininola, I love Ininola. I don't think she gets the flower she deserves, honestly. I love her. Um, there's this song she did. Um, um, hi, I'm trying to remember the name, not the Maradona one. Is it that um, addicted? I'm, I'm addicted. Yeah, you see that particular song. Yeah, yeah. just one day, just take your time out. <laughs> just play it. No, no, no. Use, I, use, use a proper a proper sound um sound system and listen to that song. <laughs> I love I love you know, I used to that I prefer her to this that then. Um, then is really really creative, but then it can be playful. But because yes, New York comes across as business minded, so yes. sometimes, um, and I don't think she spends a lot of time on social media compared to tennis. So sometimes I think she doesn't yes. get enough recognition as she deserves. But yes. I think she knows her craft really, really, yes. really well. I and really, I like really that. respect her. And I like that she is sticking with that style. Not even experimenting with anything viral and no 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 she she she's sticking to what she wants. Yeah. Like I said, she's one of the pioneer of Ama piano. As long as I'm as far as I'm concerned, in Afrobeat, she's the first person to do it. And if you notice, after Maradona, she did um Maradona, she did um addicted. You see that she, all the songs afterwards had like Afrobeat. Um, I mean, Ama piano beats. She continued in that line, yeah. And I think she's done yeah. really, really well for herself. And I just feel like she deserves more recognition and respect, anyway. Okay. But, anyways, um, that's all the time we have for um, this week's episode. Thank you so much, um, Maki, over yeah. the, for coming <laughs> on today's show. Yeah, you know, I really do hope we do this again. Sure definitely <laughs> definitely definitely we'll do this again and this time around hopefully maybe we'll, we'll bring all your all the artists on your on your music label so we can actually have a better one <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely definitely all right thank you so much and talk talk soon yeah yeah